and welcome to Community Conversations. It's so nice to be here with you all in the summertime, and today we're going to be talking about things that are very appropriate to your health, your welfare, and summer. So I have with me today, as I have had before, um, Colleen Shemansky. Colleen is a registered nurse and a certified diabetes educator, and I'm happy to say that she decided to join us on a part-time basis. Um, round of applause um, as an official TCCH representative um, so that she can um, more fully help our patients and help our staff understand. And we'll talk about how some of that is taking place and how it will affect uh, the community in general. And with her is her sidekick, Carol. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about Carol because she also has taken a more formal role, um, not directly with Treasure Coast Community Health, but as a diabetic coach in our community. So congratulations on that selection, Carol. Thank you. We're very happy to have you on board officially helping our community. So Colleen, um, you know, nobody wants to talk about diabetes because right away we think about how much weight we've gained, how bad we've been, um, you know, the feelings of hopelessness. Um, but it is a reality that um, the sugar maintenance within our own bodies, what goes in and what goes out and all of those things um, does affect, affect our long-term health. And that's your role in helping us understand it better. So from your perspective, you know, you have lots of opportunities in our community to help. Um, why did you connect the dots and say, um, this is an important initiative for me to continue on? I think um, the primary reason is that I was fascinated because diabetes is the one of the illnesses or diseases mm -hmm. that as a individual, we can have the most impact on and improve ourselves, mm -hmm. where with other illnesses, they either have to ride their course or there's extensive chemotherapy or surgeries or the prognosis is not just, is mm -hmm. not the same. Mm -hmm. But with particularly, actually even with type 1 and type 2, with so many advancements over the last 50 years and even the last 10 years, we have so many opportunities to make living with diabetes easier and better. And so it's a question of education and commitment? It's, a, it's a question of education, commitment, um, and addressing it early on. We know that um, about one in four Americans have diabetes and they don't know it. Wow. Only 10% of Americans have prediabetes and know it. But for those that don't know, they will most likely within five years develop diabetes. So it's not just talking about, you know, uh, what to do with it once you have it. Mm -hmm. You know, our mission is to prevent it or slow it down mm -hmm. early on. And that's so that's with pre-screening, that's with early intervention, and that includes um seeing your primary care providers, <laughs> making sure we, we're laughing because just prior to coming in the studio, we talked about um, how denial has run rampant mm -hmm. before, during, and even after um, this pandemic mm -hmm. of COVID, not affecting just the immunization perspective, but just not going to um, see our physicians or medical providers We're, at all. So, and with that, we know the long-term complications that we all talk about them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, low vision, blindness, kidney disease, strokes, heart attacks, but what's numbness most, in your feet? Yes. Ulcers. Yes, numbness in your feet, yeah. sores, amputations. But what's most discerning or discerning is that even though there's been a slight reduction mm -hmm. in the incidence of, of diabetes, there's an alarming number of people who are not achieving ideal health goals. That is the truth. And that, may I say what those particular? Sure. Okay. So one is um, A1Cs have gotten much higher. We want them, for the most part, to believe, be at 7% or below. Mm -hmm. But we're having, you know, 38 to 45 
percent of people over 7.5 and 8.5. Why is this a problem? Because it also elevates the unhealthy cholesterol and lowers mm -hmm. the good cholesterol. Just okay. um, and then we then have the high blood pressure, or hypertension. So, diet, which we're seeing a lot of. Yes. And and people act so surprised. They're like, right. I'm not stressed. How could that be? Remeasure. Right. right. Remeasure or it's just like that today. They think yeah. that each day <laughs> is a new, fresh start. Right. And that's why I love sitting with, with people and having the opportunity to work with patients and say, here's, you know, it's like an overflowing bowl that okay. you got to clean up the spill before you can actually, you know, reduce. Mm -hmm the risk factors they're all connected they're all in connected. other words yes. it's not a white coat syndrome that raised your blood pressure right. today no, when not. you were in the doctor's no, office <laughs> okay and we're not moving enough we, we so that is the truth yeah yeah and um and the other thing is we're we're gaining weight mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to be um probably um the next reason why we're going to see an increase and that's what they're projecting that in a couple, you know, maybe 10, 20 years, we're going to see a uh, higher incidence of diabetes because of the metabolic syndrome and the insulin resistance. Oh. So people need to get, get checked up. Well, and the other thing, you know, one of the good news um, stories is um, since we feel we are far enough along where the social isolation isn't as uh, dramatically required, um, we're starting to see more activity uh, in dancing, um, there was an article in the Press Journal not too long ago about that. Um, being able to find activities that you enjoy and you're motivated to take a part of. Um, walking with a friend is a great idea, but if your friend lives across town and you only have that one hour, it's unlikely that you're going to be going out every morning with them while you're a working individual. So how do you find those moments um, and I think that's where, again, that education and, and motivation have to come in. You have to find a way. Walk the dog for 10 minutes instead of half an hour, but yes. do it every night after dinner. Okay, find some way to increase your activity and involve your kids if you can. Right. Okay. Right. No, you're absolutely correct. Because I won't let you off the hook. I thought we were going for a walk, Mom. Right. No, and, that's, and you're right. 10-minute increments works. Even 10 minutes of um, deep breathing and relaxation lowers blood glucose. Really? Huh? So well, we need to... I'm going to get more zen-like then. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I can do that in the office. Five to seven minutes <laughs> just to okay. stop because you've got that relationship of cortisol. Aha. Uh -huh. So... There's the science coming out. <laughs> this is, I love the science. <laughs> I know you, you do. Know, I do. I love, you know, I, and I try to keep it simple, but my message really is um, to everybody that's living with diabetes, um, uh, and if they're feeling distressed or overwhelmed, um, there's, you know, there's, there's people like me as a certified diabetes educator that, uh, and, and care specialist, people hear the word education and they think, I know all about diabetes, but our I've had it for X I've number of years. Forever. Yeah. And our specialty um, really is it sit down with somebody, figure out your lifestyles, figure out where, where your labs are, figure out what's important to you and mm -hmm. what you want to achieve. It's not about blood, blood pressure control. It's about where do you want to be and how do we get you to spend more time in Target? And part of that, having had a father-in-law with type 2 diabetes live with us for many years, part of that is figuring out the trade-offs as well. For him, at 80 years old, he wanted a scoop of ice cream every night. Okay. We tried taking it away. We tried not buying it. You know, we went through all the withdrawal stuff, and it didn't work. So we finally talked to someone like yourself that said, okay, so what can he do instead? What's the trade-off so he can have that but still keep his sugar under control? That took some trial and error, but eventually everybody was happy. Right. His doctor and him. <laughs> right. And if the patient's not happy and they can't connect to it, right? you know, we can have all these wonderful goals that are based on science, mm -hmm. but if it's not a patient goal, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I, at this time of year, I'm sorry, go ahead, Carol. It's okay. I just wanted to add that as a diabetic, 
Mm-hmm. I don't like people to tell me that I can't have something. Yes. Because when the they don't felt. understand, I can have it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm diabetic, but I can eat that. You know, it's in moderation. And I like to think that, <clears throat> okay, if you're telling me that's unhealthy for me, mm-hmm. it's probably unhealthy for you too. <laughs> Good point. Good, Good point. So, I love this time of year because... Um, that's when we see so many people coming away from the um, the cooked foods and going more into fresh fruits and vegetables, cold things. Although I do have folks that will say, well, no, I can't have all that fresh fruit because it's just loaded with sugar. What's your take on that? I think that's very wrong. Um, I think they should eat it in moderation. Um, if you want to have a half a cup of watermelon, have it. Just don't eat the whole thing. <laughs> That's um, always the case. Isn't exactly. It? I mean, you're not going to sit down and eat a whole cake. Yeah. So why would hopefully. you sit and, well, hopefully, you're right. <laughs> but why would you eat a whole watermelon? Mm-hmm. You know, but you can have it. Are there, and again, not going into a lot of details, but are there some specific fruits where you're like, eh, the last time I did that, my sugar really spiked for the amount that I had? It's, it's for it's every individual with diabetes is different okay what spikes my blood sugar isn't going to spike someone else's you you have to know your um your triggers okay you you have to figure those out yourself now carol you're a type 1 diabetic yes correct yes so tell me about the things that you've got on your arm um one is a cgm which is a continuous glucose monitor okay and that regulates that's the big one that yes that's the okay. big one right here okay. and that reads my blood sugar and sends it to my insulin pump um and my insulin pump is one that can warn me when i'm going too high or when i'm going too low based on my blood sugar okay and this right here is my injection site which attaches to my insulin pump and this is how i get my insulin it gives it to me continuously, but when I eat, I have to bolus. Uh-huh. So I have to give myself enough for the carbs that I'm okay. eating. But so. it eliminates that nonstop finger stick yes. between the continuous, the, the glucose, continuous monitor. glucose monitor. Yes. I would be sticking my fingers probably six, seven, probably eight times a day. Wow. And now I only have to do it twice. So coming back to technology, you know, how things are changing. Um, Five years ago, continuous glucose monitoring was not for everyone yet. Right, exactly. Yeah, and now insurances are starting to cover that? Yes, and and as of effective July, uh, Medicare is easing up the requirements on Mm. getting a a continuous glucose meter or CGM, which is going to make it a little bit easier. if want that that high higher tech, but thankfully we now have other meters such as um, the Freestyle Libre has two meters uh, continuous glucose meters um, okay. that are that are that are affordable and insurance will probably help pick up some of it. Okay, well that's really good news um, because again as we age, our skin becomes thinner, but also um, more leathery from the finger sticks, and getting that um, manual mm-hmm. sample is much more difficult, mm-hmm. so. And you, you know what um, is, is really the, the big key difference is a finger stick gives you an immediate blood glucose. That's it. For that moment. For that. Do you want to explain, Carol, the, what a CGM <laughs> and time and range and why it's well, um, I'm going to let you have a mo- moment to think about this okay. in a condensed format while we take a break from our sponsors. Okay. And okay. then we'll come back. <laughs> it's, it's an excellent topic, but I don't want to cut you short in the middle of it. Okay. okay? Sure. So we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Vicki Soule, CEO of Treasure Coast Community Health. 
We are the only federally qualified health center in Indian River County. This means we have incredibly high standards of care and waive Medicare deductibles. We are a nonprofit that serves our community with primary medical, dental, and behavioral care, on site pharmacies as well. Make TCCH your one stop medical center. Spring into action with TCCH, offering your COVID 19 vaccines, annual medical and dental appointments, and more at tcchinc.org. Polo Grill is open with an exciting new menu featuring amazing steaks, including Snake River Wagyu. Yes, Polo Grill is open. Choose from our beautifully appointed interior or outdoor dining under a comfortable veranda. Polo Grill offers amazing chef-inspired seafood specials served by professional staff. Polo Grill, located on Ocean Drive, 772-331-4090, or visit pgbureau.com. Open seven days a week at 4.30. Visit our website for Italian-inspired twilight dinner. Dr. Robert Reinauer of New Vision Eye Center is a fellowship-trained retina surgeon. He provides the very best care for patients needing treatment for dry and wet macular degeneration and diabetic eye care, as well as surgical care of the retina, including retinal detachments and the removal of floaters. Providing world-class eye care on the Treasure Coast, Call 772-257-8700 or visit newvisioneyecenter.com. If you operate a small business, you need services like payroll, tax compliance, HR tools, and other resources. You need Complete Employee Solutions. Bureau Beach has a team of professionals, including Anthony Sammons, Matt McCain, and Jennifer Comer, who saw the need for competent payroll, HR, and employee leasing services. Call Complete Employee Solutions at 772-978-7277 or visit their website at CompleteEmployeeSolutions.com. When pretty clean isn't clean enough, call EcoEarth Cleaning Services. Every deep clean passes the owner's inspection, and EcoEarth uses no harmful chemicals. Check out the Google reviews. They sparkle just like your home will. And EcoEarth Cleaning Services doesn't just clean homes. They clean offices, business suites, and even yachts. EcoEarth Cleaning Services won't just move the dust. They remove the dust. Give your company an earth-friendly way of maintaining a clean atmosphere every day. Search Eco Earth Cleaning Services on the web for more info. And welcome back to Community Conversations. Um, if you're just joining us, this is Vicki Soule from Treasure Coast Community Health, where we provide primary medical, dental, behavioral health, pharmacy, uh, you name it. We're even going into vision services soon. So we tried to uphold one-stop shopping for your convenience, but high-quality care um, and today's program is an enhancement of that time um, so that you don't have to read it. Um, you don't have to come into your doc and spend a long time. Um, we hope that this is beneficial both for you and people that you know, because as Colleen Shemansky, our uh, certified diabetes educator, said earlier in the show, there's been so many advancements in the treatment of diabetes, as there needs to be, because we're also seeing more and more people not only diagnosed with diabetes, but pre-diabetes, and all the ripple effect that a diabetic um, body has as a result. Um, we know the signs and struggles of diabetics themselves, but um, we don't often talk about the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, those internal things that also ripple off a diabetic metabolism. So um, we just started talking with Carol here, um, who is a diabetic coach now um, for our community. And uh, Carol wears both a CGM, a constant glucose monitor, as well as a connected device, um, f which acts like an insulin pump for you so that instead of your um, body uh, producing that insulin, um, the pump is putting it out in accordance to what your needs are. Although you did explain that you also have to bolus or put, give yourself some additional insulin um, based on your meal uh, intake. Right. Got right. it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. But we asked you, I asked you a little bit more about um, that combination and then cut you off for commercial break. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fine. The, the CGM is really a tool to help diabetics manage their glucose better. Okay. Um, it can tell us times and range, um, you know, how many highs and lows we've had 
at certain times of the day. Maybe that helps us figure out what we're doing, uh, what we're eating, what we're not eating. So it's like um, a little mini computer that you've got there. It's not just a moment in time that that you did a finger stick. Right. Okay. Right. And okay. it's it's a very good tool to to help diabetics um, manage. Again, one of those wonderful advancements yes. that I wish we had seen a long time ago. Um, we said that some of the insurance companies are now starting to pay for those. Um, so again, er, listeners, if you know someone, encourage them to go to their physician and talk to them about their own physical condition. Because as Carol said, um, everybody's different. The way they react is different. Um, that's why sometimes you need a diabetic coach. Sometimes you need a formal educator um, who knows the science much better um, to figure out a care plan that works for each individual. Right. Okay. And I'm very excited to start working with TCCH. Um, this is coming through the University of Florida. Um, I technically work for them. Uh -huh. But with that grant that they have done with TCCH, I look forward to working with Colleen and uh, diabetics, Colleen can give them the medical and educational approach. And I, as a diabetic coach, can help them with the, do you know what I mean yeah. kind of things. The reality of day to day. Exactly. The, okay. the care and, you know, well, do you get this? Do you feel this way? I think it's very important for people to identify with someone who has the same thing as they so they don't feel quite so alone and isolated. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. I absolutely agree. And I'm really looking forward to having um, that opportunity because this ECHO program that the University of Florida is supporting Treasure Coast with is a way to advance our own provider's knowledge of diabetes and treatment of it. You know, in days past, again, um, we love specialists, um, but unfortunately, medical personnel are just in as short a supply as anywhere else, and endocrinology was our go-to for people with complicated diabetes or pre-diabetic issues, and they're just not as available as we need them to be. So what we're doing is scaling up the knowledge base through the University of Florida professors in this endocrinology realm um, to help our providers with that. And through that, then, we'll be helping our patients that, like yourself, um, have a much more um, intense need <laughs> <laughs> for medication, for consulting, and those types of things. So it's a wonderful thing. It is. So how will they get a hold of you eventually, Carol? Because I know you're brand new in this. I will be able to be uh, get a hold of... Um they will be able to get a hold of me through TCCH. Okay. Um, and the providers that are there and from Colleen. Okay. And Carol, you'll be doing a lot of community events. Yes. Um, yes. Yay. And we yes. actually have two coming up um, tomorrow. Right. I think so. Yeah. yeah, tomorrow and Wednesday at TCCH. Yes. Okay. Well, for those of you that see our Facebook post, it will be tomorrow. For those that are listening to the radio, um, stay tuned. We'll have some others um, because that is the goal, is to put you both out where you can talk to the general public and educate them on the wonderful things that we're doing. So we really appreciate you guys being back here again. It's been six, eight months. Yes. Um, hopefully we won't let as much time go by because I think it's a very pertinent subject that a lot of people are interested in, you know, on the outside, maybe not so much. Um, but internally, um, I doubt that uh, anybody's walking away from gaining more knowledge about improving their own life circumstances. So, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And we'll see you tomorrow again. Yes. <laughs> And thank you all very much for listening in. Um, we have lots of great guests scheduled ahead of us. Um, our next opportunity will be to talk about women's health. So stay tuned next week.